Hey, what's up? Ian from Powerhouse Miniatures, how you doing? This is my second review video of the new Citadel Texture Paints. So, last week I did a separate video of some of these ones on the left there. New Martian Iron Crust, Steel and Battle Maya and Armageddon Dunes. And I did a side-by-side -side Martian Iron Earth, Steel and Mud, and then a Ghrelin Earth as well. So, this is the second video to them. So, today I've got Astro Granite Debris, Valhalla and Blizzard, and a Ghrelin Badland. So, in the same one as previous, I thought I'd just do up a few bases just to show as a side-by-side. -side. So we've also got um, Morn, Mountain Snow, and then Lustrian under Undergrowth. So the, this one doesn't have the label on it. I got it cheap in a hobby shop near me. So, so pretty much the same as before. Um, I'll just show them off sort of side by side. Some of them, obviously, um, like Martian Iron Earth and Martian Iron Crust, are the same colour and stuff like that. So I'll speak with them. So first off, Martian Iron Earth and Martian Iron Crust. Yeah, to focus him. So of course, Martian Iron Earth's got that cool cracked effect. Looks awesome. I really, I really like that in a Grand Earth. Uh, and then Martian Iron Crust, much thicker, um, much grainier, but finer grained. And then you can just see if you put a thicker layer on, the uh, the grain itself. Let's get that's it to focus again. There, um, the grain itself will crack. So it looks awesome. So in a minute we'll uh, look at a Grell and Badland because it does it's a better effect. But um, if you did it thicker, or like two layers or something, you would get a similar crackled effect, but with a much thicker base. So it's really interesting. I really like that one. Next, Steel and Battle Mire and Steel and Mud. So Steel and Battle Mire, thicker grains, more of them. They're the same colour brown, so you can mix them together if you wanted to. Though I don't really know why you would do that, but yeah, there you go. Uh, super quick, and again, these things dry rock solid, and again, it's a good, good thickness. Again, got a mill or two of um, like height on it, and yeah, dry rock solid, so you could dry brush brown over that or bone color over that straight away. A couple of tufts, and you're finished. So, Armageddon Dunes, and this is Lustrian Undergrowth. So, Armageddon Dunes again, thick, solid, big chunks, grainy stuff, um, dries in about an hour, and you could dry brush straight over the top. And then Lustrian Undergrowth seems to have a bit of a glossy finish. Um, but again, thick, grainy, you know, a relatively thick application of it. Again, so we see it from the side. You know, it's a good good height on the basis sort of thing. And uh, yeah, that'd be awesome with some scattered leaves, a couple of tufts, um, that sort of thing. So next, Astro Granite Debris. So they also sell Astro Granite, and I don't have it, basically. So that was, uh, I can't do a side-by-side -side one of that. Astro Granite Debris. Get to focus in the middle there. Right, so again, really thick. Um, like, you know, 3D texture. Um, no paint or primer applied to these. So, this one I had a few issues with. Basically, if you look in the pot itself, on this side, you can see through the pot and it's pretty much just sand. Very, very thick and a few, you, you know, you can see the pigment as well. And then on this side there, all the medium and the pigment, or whatever, the, uh, yeah, the medium is just all over there, right? So it needed a real good shake up, and this has been sat for like two hours, and it's it's done it again. It's sort of separated a little bit, and before I shook it properly, I mixed I mixed it together with the uh, you know the wood end of the brush sort of thing, and before that I couldn't get it to stick on the base at all. It, the the grains clumped to each other and then fell off. They didn't really adhere to the base. But these bases haven't been primed or painted with a base layer. So I would say, before um, you know, just try that out as well. Obviously, priming it properly and putting a, a like a, a base layer, base layer of paint on the base because that might uh, that might help it. But yeah, when it mixed together, it was fine. Um, very grainy again. Thick, big chunks um, straight away. One application, obviously. So again, just super quick, super easy way to do it, and it's um, it's like a really dark blue. When the pigment separates itself, you can see the pigment inside the pot. And there, we'll just have a look. Might be able to see it. Yeah, you see on the lid. I don't know whether the colours come through properly, but it's like a really dark blue, like a grey blue sort of colour. So, um, yeah, so it'll, it'll match with Astro Granite as well. So next, Morn Mountain Snow. Which is this one? This with that old texture, and then Valhalla and Blizzard. Right. So Morn Mountain Snow it dried with a matte finish. Uh, it went on really thick. 
again, um, like grainy, a bit like some of the older ones, a bit like sterling mud or something like that, like thin, uh, just uneven grains and stuff like that. So uh, it looked pretty good, but yeah, it dried matte. Now Valhalla and Blizzard is more like a slushy, wet, sort of bubbly snow, and it dried um, with a sort of a gloss finish. So that is awesome. Now the thing is, the pigments stuck together, they're very very fine, but they stick together in this like uneven um, sort of a, a pattern, like that, and then the medium that it's with disappears, or sort of dries uh, translucent, right? So in the corners there, it dried completely black all the way through to the base, which means, I mean, this this one's pretty good, I'm just going to set this one down more than my snow. Um, yeah, so this one, so you need a base layer underneath, obviously. So um, white would work, a blue would work, turquoise or something like that, maybe coming through, you know, pick whatever you want. But definitely need something underneath, or a combination of wet and dry snow. So you could do um, a white underneath this and then put little clumps where you want it of um, like static snow sort of thing. Uh, I forget what the Games Workshop one's called, but yeah, you could do that. And then some, uh, maybe some grass coming through, some like snow on the top, something like that. Yeah, it's a very slushy, wet snow, which is awesome. So yeah, and it, and it dries my hair like a, in a gloss sort of a way. So that one in particular is really bloody good. Really like it. On the uh, more mountain snow as well, by the way, is a really light blue. It's got like a bluey sort of colour to it. Again, if you can see inside the pot. Um, yeah, it reminds me of like Celestra Grey or something like that from Games Workshop. So last two, we've got the new Agrellan Badland versus the old Agrellan Earth. So again, same colour, same one, it's just like a bigger, meatier Agrellan Earth. <laughs> there you go. Alright, let's make sure they're all focusing and stuff. So of course on the right is Agrellan Earth, that awesome cracked pattern, desert-ish pattern, and again these, uh, no paint, no primer. So just straight onto the 25mm bases and of course you can see in the middle that little gap thing that comes like moulded onto the bases. Uh, and then the one on the left, a grill and badland, look at that. Now this is a really thick application, it was just a big lump but it went on really easy. Um, so again, you know, got a good thickness coming off the base itself. If this little piece of the base is like 3 or 4, you know, 3 mil or whatever, that's a good, you know, 1 or 2 millimetres coming off the base. And then it cracked in the centre, all the way through like that. So it's really cool. So it's some combination, basically, of the thicker, new texture paints, and then the old cracked pan. So absolutely awesome. Yeah. So I really like that. And then it reminded me, basically, of the still uh, Martian Iron Crust, like I said earlier, because I believe if you put let's get this to focus. Because yeah, I believe if you put a thicker layer of Martian Iron Crust on the base, it would make an effect like this. I'm, I'm positive it would. So that's something to play around with in the future, but that looks, that looks awesome. Really, really good. So those two I'm particularly impressed with, because like I said, it's a combination of both. It's uh, bigger, thicker parts and stuff like that, but um, with that cracked effect too. So there you go, a grill and badland. That was awesome. So uh, my summary of, of them all, basically, was there's a full colour range of quick and easy but really effective basing options at a good price. Uh, the effects of the new texture paints looks like you've glued down sand before, priming, done that thing, you know, you uh, PVA glue some sand or gravel down to a base before you prime the model. Uh, mine dried solidly within a few hours and we're ready to dry brush. You could add tufts of grass or patches of grass and really quickly have really decent looking bases. You can Probably you can you can know, get them in the large pots, which is the thing. You can get them for the four fifty five pots or about three sixty from the independent retailers online. But one of those pots will last you absolutely ages. Um, so the only negative I can really think is that if you didn't like the effect or it didn't come out right, like Astro Granite, for example, Astro Granite debris, uh, you would be lumped a fibre out of pocket. But again, that's really clutching at straws because it's uh, only a few quid. I got one of the texture spreaders from Games Workshop. Games Workshop texture spreader. Didn't like that at all. It's best just to use a large base brush or something like this is what I use basically. What's that the small dry brush even? And then you can see it's knackered the bristles, but 
that's what you know just accept that that's what's going to happen these cost three or four quid um <clears throat> uh i can genuinely see myself using every single one of these so a grill and badland in particular really impressed with them valhall and blizzard really really good uh, and it's not very often I would say that I would buy a full range of those technical paints and use them. So that is it. So generally, over the last few years as well, Games Workshop have started to produce these awesome texture paints, the technical paints as well, the Blood Effect, the Nurgle's Rot, Typhus Corrosion, stuff like that. Uh, they've also got this new range of texture paints which are amazing. Uh, they've got airbrush paints now. They've got a full range of tools that are really, really good, even though they're really expensive, same as that, all of it. Their little hobby pliers are amazing, um, the little snipe nose ones. Uh, well, there's a million different things that they've started to do. Like, they've got their water effects, there's still water. Like, apart from, I mean, they've got the scenic bases as well. Apart from maybe producing and selling an airbrush, like a physical airbrush, because their spray gun isn't very good, but, you know, like a... An equivalent one or something like that. I can't really think of anything else that the aftermarket, the third party sort of people for Games Workshop or for the miniature wargaming hobby. I can't think of really anything else that they've not got their fingers in apart from maybe magnets. And there you go. So they're expanding their ranges and stuff, but they're also producing products to compete at the highest level with a lot of the stuff you would typically associate with third party companies. So again, over the last few years, the airbrush paints have been really good. Um, and the comp comparable in terms of quality to Vallejo and uh, P3 and, and everything like that, they're really good stuff. These technical paints and some of the textures that they just came out of, uh, out with, sorry, uh, are absolutely excellent. Like again, to compete with some of the, all of the aftermarket stuff, um, their brushes are really good now. They used to be terrible, but like the new range of brushes is absolutely amazing. Like, I, I use them quite a lot now, if anything. Uh, they're really cheap as well. Um, I mean, what else is there? Like, you know, well, what else is there? You're going to start selling pre-painted miniatures or something, and I'm out of a business. But, but there it is. So that's it. Anyway, that's my little review of them. Really, really impressed. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll buy all of them, and I have, and I will use all of them, which is uh, it's rare I'd ever say that. So that's it. You can check out my commission painting page, which is facebook.com forward slash powerhouse miniatures, and all my pictures on there. And other than that, cheers for watching, and have a good one.